Hello artists. Today we're going to make a red cardinal in a snowy picture. This is snow down here and there's some snow falling. I didn't finish the sky, but you get the idea of what we're working towards. So you're going to need a white piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. You could use markers, that would work super, or I used oil pastels. Whatever you would like. Now the first shape that we're going to use is like half of a circle. And it's on the diagonal. So I like to turn my paper when I make curves. So I'm going to come in here and make my curve. And it actually, if we did the full half circle, it would come here. But if you're thinking about it as you're working along, you could leave that part off because you're gonna have a wing that's gonna overlap that area. All right, let us put on the face. The face is just a little section here that's gonna be black and a circle. Then we'll fill that in black and that in yellow. And our beak, which is gonna be curved like that. Okay, let's put in our wing. This is gonna have a nice big curve shape here. And then some kind of wavy lines to show the end of the feathers here. Now, I did lightly put in that line. I'm gonna erase that now. As we mentioned earlier, the wing overlaps the body. Okay, now we're going to do the bottom tail. Now that pretty much goes along that line on the back. It's smaller here and gets a little bit bigger. And then we're going to do a similar wave, but we're going to get bigger in the center. So we've got our bird done already. Yay! We are going to go on and do the claw, so we can have the claws are going to hang on to the branch. So I'm going to do one here, a little bit of a leg, a little bit of a leg. And kind of like curving triangles. And then the branch, this is a trick to doing branches. Don't just start here and go and hope that the claws will match up. Start at the claws so you know it's going to match up. So the bottom half is going to go here. And then the top half and put here. Now that's the hard part. Now we have the easy part where we just go down. Now I'm going to aim to go under the tail because I think it looks interesting when you have some overlap happening. And I'm going to get slightly bigger because to the left is where the tree is has branches connect to the trunk of the tree. And then we're gonna move this up a little bit. We're gonna have the biggest branch kind of sweep like that. And we'll have one smaller twig gonna come out there. And then it, I think it'd be interesting to have another one come up here. And you can actually add as many as you would like. It's kind of fun to add them. They could be thicker or thinner, whatever your imagination tells you. So 
So the very last thing we're going to do is add a little bit of a far away landscape. We're going to do a snowy hill. So we're just going to add kind of some slopes and interesting lines. It's a nice cold snowy day somewhere. And then the last line we're going to do is, uh, it could be a mountain line. I'm going to use it for an uh, evergreen forest. So I'm going to do shapes that are pokey like that. And different sizes, some variety in there. Yep, but then have it pick up again. Okay, now what we're going to do with this sky is we want the look. Let me bring back our color picture. We want the look that there's some snow falling, but it takes a lot of work to color around them. So I wouldn't do, you know, 50 to 100, that'd be way too many. Maybe do like 20. So I put in some circles. And some I have close together, some I have far away. I look at spots that look like they could really use a little snow spot in. And I try to remember some of the ones down below the branches. So that is plenty. All right, we are ready for color. Yay. Now I want to give you the option, if you would out, like to outline in Sharpie, you certainly can. I did that on this picture. So if that interests you, Sharpie all your shapes except for your snow. But I'm not going to do it on my drawing here. So I'm going to start with my body shape. Now a really important thing with coloring is to go the same direction. And that will make it look neat and just extra beautiful. With oil pastels, you can go over several times and it will start to fill in all the white cracks or the white little spaces. That's the same for colored pencil and crayon also. Now it does definitely take more time to color this way, but it's just worth it when you get done and you look at what your finished product is. I would not go right across to the wing because then it will make it look flatter and we want to look a little dimensional. So when I get to the wing, kind of curve it And then I start coming down. It's thinking about every aspect. Your drawing of your initial lines and shapes, but then also as you color, be continuing to think about what would help your drawing look the best. I grew up with a lot of cardinals coming to my backyard in Upper State, New York, and they sure looked gorgeous with the white snow behind them. Just, I will never forget how beautiful they looked. Now the eye can be white, 
and the beak, I mean yellow, and then yellow for the legs and the claws. And let's do brown for the branch. Go careful when you're going right between the legs there and right up close to them because you that's one place that if you do messy, it will stand out. So what color should we color this? Do you remember what I told you that this part is? It's a snow. So we're gonna leave it just the white of the paper. One time you cannot color or you do not have to color is when the object you're drawing is actually white. Okay, now I mentioned that these were evergreen trees. So I kind of go down to kind of emphasize that look that they could look like evergreen trees, kind of a needle look. But you don't want to take forever, so I just do it kind of fast. Even if you just go down, down and up, that's better than going across. An artist is just creating the illusion of something. And so how we lay in our color helps tell the picture of um, the story of what our illusion is. In this case, it's a beautiful cardinal that landed in a tree with a snowy backdrop and evergreen forest far away in the distance. Okay, let's get, get black. I am gonna actually use my Sharpie for this black section. Now the hardest part is covering up. That's the sky. It's the biggest area. And it's also, it's got all those circles of snow, which are hard to go around. Oh, that looked good. Oh, we could also add some lines. Let's see, I'm gonna just use this dark brown and add some lines in there. And um, on the snow, I think it looks nice. If you have a gray or a light blue, if you put in a little bit of a sense of some shadows. Um, okay, so now the sky. Now, this is gonna take a while, but if you circle them in whatever you're coloring, in whatever art supply, you start with that, then go the same direction, whatever direction you choose. I'm gonna go across. I'm making like a little wall there and a little wall there. I'm careful by that little snowflake. Now this is going to probably take you 20 minutes to do. It will end up looking so beautiful. The colors are so rich and striking. When 
your coloring, you can just relax your mind. It's not as hard as drawing. And maybe you can put some music on, some Christmas carols. That would be a good idea. And you can mix colors. You can kind of smush them a little bit with your finger. That's another idea to do with some materials. Some don't work that way, but chalk does and these oil pastels do. Okay, so I didn't get a whole lot farther in my finished one because that sky takes so long. But I hope you give this project a try and I hope you enjoy it. And then be sure and put your picture up somewhere that your family can enjoy it. I'm sure they would love to get to see it. And I'll put them in the Christmassy time of feeling. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.